All right, we have quadratic functions review. So question number one says y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. <clears throat> and again, this chapter we're looking for x-intercepts, where the last chapter we were looking for the vertex. So how are we going to find the x-intercepts? We're going to do a table of values. So let's make a table. And let's say x and y. And then let's say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And then we're going to take that equation, write it off to the right again, and we're going to substitute the first value, negative 2. So y equals open bracket, negative 2, close squared, minus 2, open negative 2, minus 3. And I'm just going to cheat and give you the answer off the graph and calculator, but feel free to do all those on your own. We have y equals 5. So we can put that in the table. And then I'm just going to give you the rest of the values. So negative 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 3. And we may as well go for another point, 3, comma 0. Good, so let's graph this thing. So let's draw a graph. And let's start off with negative 2, 5. And negative 1, 0. And 0, negative 3. And 1, negative 4. And then symmetrical points. Careful, 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 careful. All good. Just leave it. Just leave it. Just put new ones on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't erase it. It's going to be too difficult. All good. Okay, so we accidentally weren't careful enough, so we just showed you that it doesn't matter. Leave the points on. Feel free to erase the ones that you can, and let's draw that parabola. Awesome. So again, remember, if you forget all methods, we're simply going to graph with a table of values. Let's write down what the x-intercepts are near the x-intercepts. So open bracket, negative 1, 0. Off to the right, we have 3, 0. And we have the vertex, 1, negative 4, finding everything with the table of values. All right. All right. So question 2a. So we have y equals x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now, we're looking for x-intercepts, and in order to find an x-intercept, we know that y is 0. Let's start by putting 0 in for y. 0 equals, hang tight. Now, we're going to factor the right-hand side. Two numbers that multiply to get 8 and add to get 6 are 4 and 2, so we're going to factor it to be x plus 4, x plus 2. Now, for multiplying two things together to make 0 side by side, we're going to say x plus 4 equals 0. And beside it, we're going to say x plus 2 equals 0. We're then going to solve. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides and get x equals negative 4. Notice we skipped that step. Let's circle that answer. This time, just off to the right, let's actually subtract 2 from both sides and get x equals negative 2. So those are going to be our x-intercepts. Let's circle that answer. And then let's draw a graph. So... If we draw a graph and put our x-intercepts at negative 4 and negative 2, careful, that's negative 1, good, at negative 2, then notice we have a 1 in front of x squared at the top, so put a 1 in front of the x squared. Now if you think backwards, we want to go over 1, 1 squared is 1, we know that our vertex is at negative 3 negative 1. So let's put that vertex at negative 3, negative 1, and let's draw that parabola labeling all three of our points. So let's start off with negative 4, 0. Our other x-intercept at negative 2, 0, and our vertex at negative 3, negative 1. So notice I just knew where the vertex was because I learned the pattern of how a parabola works from the last chapter. If we have a 1x squared, it's over 1. 1 squared is 1 up 1, and a symmetrical point on the other side. We're not going to keep focusing on the vertex in the rest of this chapter. We're only going to be focusing on the x-intercepts as we spent a lot of time focusing on the vertex in the last chapter. So again, we're just going to be focusing on new ways 
other than algebra to figure out what the x-intercepts are. All right. Okay, so we've got 2b. So 2b says y equals negative x squared minus 5x. Good, so this time we're gonna put zero in for y because we're looking for x-intercepts. Notice the question may have already done that for you. Now we're gonna factor out a negative x and we're left with x plus five. We're gonna very carefully set our factors equal to zero separately, negative x equals zero, and beside it, x plus five equals zero. The equation on the left, we're going to divide both sides by negative 1 over negative 1 over negative 1, and x equals 0. The equation on the right, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides, and x equals negative 5. So if we circle both of our answers, we can now draw a graph, and we have our x-intercepts at negative 5 and at 0 and we can mark our x-intercepts at negative 5 comma 0 and 0 comma 0. Negative 5, 0 and 0 comma 0. Let's clean up that 5 a tad. Nice. Good. Negative 5, 0. Perfect. And then let's just draw a parabola through it. Who cares? So we're just going to draw a parabola through our two points. Again, remember, we're not concerned with the vertex right now because we spent so much time in the last chapter. We're just looking for x-intercepts, and right now we're factoring to do it. Awesome. Okay, so we have 2c. y equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. Now we're going to factor this thing. Off to the right, blank times blank equals. Below it, blank plus blank equals. Now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get. Now notice A is not 1, so it's a more difficult type of factoring. So from the top, let's put an arrow from the 2 to the 2. The first number to the last number. Yep, exactly. Good. And we're working for two numbers that multiply to get negative 4. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And we're looking for two numbers that add to get the middle number, negative 3. So the numbers that multiply to get 4 and add to get 3 are 1 and 4 to begin. 1 and 4. Again, 1 and 4. Yep, below 1 and 4. Now we're going to look at the addition statement, decide which one needs to be negative. It's the negative 4. We put that negative above and confirm that the multiplication statement works. It sure does. So now we're going to split up the middle number. So let's start by saying 0 e. Oh, let's put 0 in for y right away. We're looking for x-intercepts where y is 0. And then let's factor it. So 0 equals. So we're going to separate the middle number. So 2x squared minus 4x plus 1x minus 2. You may be wondering, did the order matter? No. Okay, we're going to put brackets around the first two terms and brackets around the second two terms. And next time, we're not going to cut off the negative. So let's try that again. Let's erase that first bracket. And we're going to put a bracket there. Exactly. Excuse us. So do not cut off that positive sign because it matters. Okay, we're going to remove a greatest common factor from both sets. So 2x open bracket x minus 2. Now we have to pull something out. We're going to pull out a positive 1. Positive 1. Good. Let's put a positive in front of that 1 there. Perfect. So now we have a greatest common factor of x minus 2, so we can take that out. x minus 2. And we're left with 2x plus 1. Now this thing still is equal to 0, so let's say equal to 0. And let's set our factors equal to 0 separately and solve. x minus 2 equals 0. And 2x plus 1 equals 0. And on the equation on the right, let's add 2 to both sides. And we're going to say x equals 2. And we're going to subtract 1. And 2x equals negative 1. And we're going to divide both sides by 2. And x equals negative 1 half. Let's circle both of these answers. And let's sketch a little graph. And we have x-intercepts at 2 and negative 1 half. And let's draw a parabola through them. And let's label our x-intercepts on the graph. 2 comma 0 and negative 1 half comma 0. 
So notice in the questions before, because it was such an easy factoring when A is one, I didn't actually do the setup. But this setup is extremely important for the more difficult questions. If this factoring is a problem, make sure you go back to grade 10 and learn how to factor these things properly, because that's the easy part. The new part is setting our factors equal to zero to find these x-intercepts. All right. Okay, we have 2D. So we have y equals 9x squared minus 4. <clears throat> so we have a differences of squares. Let's put 0 in for y. We're looking for x-intercepts. And this is simply going to factor to be 3x plus 2 and 3x minus 2. Again, if you have difficulty factoring, go back to grade 10 and learn how to factor. There's all sorts of notes, homework, video on those. Okay, so we're going to set our factors equal to zero separately. So we're going to have 3x plus 2 equals zero. And we're going to have 3x minus 2 equals zero. And then on the equation on the left, we're going to add 2 to both sides. Excuse me, minus 2 to both sides. 3x equals negative 2. Then we're going to divide both sides by 3 x equals negative two-thirds. Circle your answer. Okay, the equation on the right, we're going to add two to both sides, so 3x equals two. And then we're going to divide both sides by three, so x equals two-thirds. So if we draw a graph down below, we can put our x-intercepts at negative 0.66 and positive 0.66 and then just draw a parabola through it. Again, remember, we don't care about what the rest of it is. Let's label our x-intercepts. So open bracket, negative 2 thirds, comma, 0, and 2 thirds, comma, 0. We could find the vertex or the y-intercept, but we're just not concerned with that as we did so much of it in the last chapter. All right. Okay, we have 2e x squared equals 5x minus 6. So the question says solve slash find x intercepts. So if it was y equals, then we put 0 in for y. But here we have to get it equal to 0. So we're going to minus 5x from both sides. First, hang tight, and both sides. And we're going to say x squared minus 5x equals negative 6. Then we're going to add 6 to both sides and get x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. So notice this is back to what it was previously. Now we never set it up, so let's actually set it up properly. Off to the right, blank times blank equals 6. And below it, blank plus blank equals negative 5. Now, numbers that multiply to get 6 and add to get 5 are going to be difficult. So, we know that it could be 2 and 3 or 1 and 5. 1 and 6, excuse me. It has to be 1 and 6. So, 1 and 6, 1 and 6. Now, look at the addition statement. Decide on which one needs to be negative. No, it's wrong. Cross it out. Cross out the whole system. Perfect. Uh, next time, one single line through our stuff so we can read it in the future. So blank times blank equals 6. And blank plus blank equals negative 5. Notice it has to be 2 and 3. So 2 and 3. Now look at the addition statement. Decide which one needs to be negative or both. Both of them. Put those two negatives above and make sure that the multiplication statement works. Awesome, so we can factor this thing. So back to the left, x minus 2 and x minus 3. And if we set our factors equal to 0, we have x minus 2 equals 0 and we have x minus 3 equals 0. Now, for many years, your teachers have been telling you to show every step. And for a little bit now, we absolutely have been. But what we're going to start to do is just say what we're going to do and then just write the answer from that. So in the equation on the left, if we add 2 to both sides in our heads, x equals 2. Circle our answer. And if we on the equation on the right, if we add 3 to both sides, x equals 3. Circle our answer. So we can draw a graph and put our two x-intercepts on at 2 and 3 and draw a parabola through it. 
So we've done enough of those graphing and drawing the parabola. We're just going to now in the future probably only just do the algebra to find the x-intercepts. All right. Okay, we have 2f. x squared plus 1 equals 0. So if in our heads we subtract 1 from both sides, x, sure, x squared equals negative 1. So how do we get rid of a squared? We have to square root both sides. So square root both sides, and we get x equals, can we square root a negative? No, cross it out, and no solution. Good, so let's just sketch this graph. So it's a little parabola. Now I'm just gonna tell you what it looks like. Feel free to graph it on your graph and calculator, but we have a y-intercept of one, and we have a one in front, so one squared is one in both sides, and we can draw a parabola. Notice it doesn't have any x-intercepts. If the method that you're trying to use does not work, it means that what you're looking for does not exist. So because we tried to square root both sides and we couldn't, it means that there are no x-intercepts what we are looking for. Awesome. Okay, we have 2g. So we have two open bracket, x minus one, close bracket, open bracket, x minus seven, close bracket equals negative open bracket, x minus four, close bracket squared, minus six. So if we take this thing and we rewrite the left-hand side, two open bracket, x minus one, close open, x minus seven, equals negative open. Now squared means x minus four times x minus four. So we're gonna say x minus four times x minus four. Minus six still. Good, so let's start skipping a line just cause it might get a little bit messy. So we're gonna foil this thing out. So let's start by saying two open bracket. Now x times x is x squared, so x squared. Now hang tight. So FOIL has four steps. First, outsides, insides, last. We're gonna combine, that's okay. We're gonna combine these terms at the same time. So x times negative seven is negative seven x. Negative one times x is negative one x. Negative seven x minus one x is negative eight x. If any of you have a problem with that, go back to grade 10 and learn how to FOIL these things out or grade nine or whichever grade they learned it. Negative one times negative seven is positive seven equals negative open. So we're gonna get x squared. Then x times negative four is negative four x. Negative four times x is negative four x. Negative four x minus four x is negative eight x. And then negative four times negative four is positive 16. Close bracket minus six. So now we're gonna distribute our two. So on the left-hand side, we're gonna get two x squared minus 16 x plus 14 equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 16 minus 6. So we accidentally have an extra closed bracket on the left-hand side. It kind of looks funny. Let's just erase or scribble that out. Nice, good. Okay, so we're gonna start doing these things one at a time. Let's add x squared to both sides. So plus x squared plus x squared. And we have 3x squared minus 16x plus 14 equals 8x, hang tight. Now negative 16 minus six is going to be negative 22. Good, so we're gonna subtract 8x from both sides, minus 8x. Good, so we're left with 3x squared minus 24x plus 14 equals negative 22. Then we're gonna add 22 to both sides. And we're going to get positive 36. Now, notice this thing has, all of these things can be divided by three. So we're going to over three, over three, over three, over three. 
Good. And the right-hand side as well, over 3. Good. So we're dividing both sides by 3. So it's going to clean up to be x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Now, two numbers that multiply to get 12 and add to get negative 8 are going to be negative 6 and negative 2. So x minus 6 and x minus 2. And if we set our factors equal to 0 separately, we're going to get x minus 6 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. In our heads, if we add 6, we're going to get x equals 6. And if we add 2, we're going to get x equals 2. So x equals 6 and x equals 2 is the solution. I'm just going to review again. We have to get this thing equal to 0. If it's y equals, we put 0 in for y. If it's not equal to zero, we have to get this thing equal to zero. We get it equal to zero, we factor it, we state our answers. Again, we get it equal to zero, we factor it, we state our answers. Awesome. Okay, so we have 2h. y equals x squared minus 4x minus 3. So let's set it up. Off to the right, blank times blank equals negative 3 and blank plus blank equals negative 4. So the only numbers that multiply to get 3 are 1 and 3. Let's start by putting 1 and 3 in both locations. Now, notice, there's we'd have to put both being negative in the addition statement. So let's put them both being negative in the addition statement, in the addition statement first. Now put those negatives directly above and confirm that this doesn't work. Let's put one single line through it. Good, so when it doesn't factor, then we have to perform another method. So for the remainder of the chapter, we're gonna learn all sorts of other algebraic methods and other types of methods, but for this time, we're just gonna draw it on the graphing calculator. So let's say y equals, and then if you open up your graphing calculator, let's put a button around it, and then you would type that thing in. Then we'll just press graph, and another button around it. So again, remember, if you can't see it, press zoom six. Can you go for zoom six off to the right there? Zoom six. That gives you a nice standard 10 by 10 window, and then it's very easy to see. So let's draw this graph in the center of the page. And we have x-intercepts at approximately these locations. So just put those x-intercepts on good, and then just draw a parabola through it. So we need to find exactly what these x-intercepts are. So we're going to do it. Let's write the buttons below the graph. Second, that's 2nd. Then calc, and we'll put buttons around our things. So we're going to look for a zero. So that's number two. So let's say zero and put a button around it. Oh, let's spell out zero because it says zero. Now let's find the one on the left first. So it's asking us to go left bound. Let's move our cursor left bound. You want to put an arrow to left bound? Yep, and put an arrow to left bound, exactly. So left bound is gonna be above, we press enter. Then we go right bound, so we move the cursor barely right of the x-intercept, we press enter, we press enter again, and we have our x-intercept. So starting a little bit to the left, open bracket, negative 0 0.65, comma 0. So that's the x-intercepts on the left. Now we're going to use the same buttons to find the intercept on the right. So second calc 0. And then left bound, notice left bound this time is below. Press enter, move your cursor right bound, press enter. It says guess, press enter again. And we have 4.65 comma zero. Good, put an arrow directly to the zero from below. Yep, uh, yep, good. And say one e to the negative 12. That's what my calculator told me. Um, not like that. Just, uh, so just one capital E, yeah, one E negative 12. Exactly. So that means zero. Remember your calculator is a stupid tool that is good at doing arithmetic fast.
If it says a number like 1 e to the negative 12, that just means 0. Okay, there's a better way to do this. So below second calc 0, let's say y equals. And then let's put a button around it. And then let's press the down arrow. So press, press, press say a down arrow and a button around it. Good. And then we're going to say y2 equals 0. y sub 2 equals 0. y sub 2 sub sub 2 equals 0. So that's what we're going to type into the second y equals. So the first one was y1. This one's going to be y2. What that does is puts this horizontal line in red if we can draw a horizontal line at the x-axis and circle both of our intersections between those two lines. It's going to be a much faster process. Down below in red, let's say second, 2nd, calc again, and this time intersect. Then if you press enter, then we just have to press enter three times. Enter, 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 and it gives you the x-intercepts. So this is going to be a much faster way than doing the left bound, right bound thing. So just giving you another method to do it. You can decide on whichever one you like. It doesn't matter. But either we're going to find the zeros by doing left bound, right bound, or we're just going to find the intersection of the line y equals zero with our parabola. All right. Okay, we have 3a. Find the quadratic function in factored and standard form. So it gives us x intercepts. So let's start by saying x equals 2 and 2 inches off to the right, x equals 6. So the equi we want to get these things equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides, minus 2 minus 2, and we'll get x minus 2 equals 0. Then on the equation on the right, we're going to minus 6 from both sides, minus 6 minus 6, and then we'll get x minus 6 equals 0. Now, working backwards, we can just put these two things in brackets side by side. So x minus 2, x minus 6 equals 0. So sometimes that's a valid answer. That's in factored form. It's equal to 0. Let's cross out 0 and say y, just to the right. Exactly. So both of those answers are valid. Let's circle that. So that's in factored form, y equals bracket that, bracket that. We're now going to foil it out. So let's mirror it, y equals. And we're going to get x squared. Good. And then x times negative 6 is negative 6x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And we're going to get negative 8x plus 12. We don't need that bracket out in front. So we're going to get x squared plus 8x plus 12. Remember, it could be equal to 0 or it could be y equals. Let's circle that answer as well. So again, remember, your teacher might ask you for something like write a quadratic function in factored or standard form, and you have to know both different forms. So now we've seen all three forms. We've seen vertex form in the last chapter, factored form, and standard form. All right. Okay, we have 3b. So we can say x equals 2. We can say x equals negative 2. And this time they've given us an a value of 2. So a equals 2. So back to the margin, let's say our factored form y equals a open bracket. Now, in the last question, we knew that we just added 2 and got excuse me, minus 2 on the equation on the, on the x equal, you know what, let's do this down below. So let's rewrite x equals 2 from above, and let's minus 2 from both sides, minus 2, minus 2, so x minus 2 equals 0, and we can put that in the first brackets above, x minus 2, close bracket, and then down below, x equals negative 2, and we can add 2 to both sides, and x plus 2 equals 0, and then we can put that in the second set of brackets. 
But this time they've given us an A value. So we can just put two in for A. So Y equals two open, X minus two, close open, X plus two. And circle our answer. So we're gonna foil this thing out down below. So let's say Y equals two open, and let's foil this whole thing out step by step. So we're going to get x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 4. We can cross off close bracket. We can cross off those middle terms. And we're going to distribute our 2. y equals 2x squared minus 8. Circle your answer. Good. Let's erase that funny bracket that we've accidentally closed. All good. Right on. So standard form and factored form. Notice the A value will contribute to how steep it is. We can have the same x-intercepts with a different A value. So be very careful with that. All right. Okay, we have 3C. So let's say x equals 3 over 2. And off to the right, x equals negative 7 over 2. So the equation on the left, we're going to start by timesing both sides by 2. 2 times, never, never there. Uh, yeah, always on the tops. Always on the tops. Times 2. And on the left-hand side, 2 times. Sure. Okay, so let's clean that up. So let's cross off the 2s on the right-hand side. And let's say 2x equals 3. And let's minus 3 from both sides. Minus 3, minus 3. And we're going to have 2x minus 3 equals 0. The equation on the right, we're going to times both sides by 2 times 2 and 2 times. And we're going to cross out the 2s on the right. And we're going to get 2x equals negative 7. And then we're going to add 7 to both sides. And we'll get 2x plus 7 equals 0. We can then say y equals or 0 equals, let's say y equals 2x minus 3, brackets around it, and 2x plus 7, brackets around it. Circle our answer. Now we're going to foil it out. y equals 4x squared, let's do all the steps, plus 14x, minus 6x, minus 21, and we'll combine like terms. y equals 4x squared plus 8x minus 21. Circle your answer. So let's just quickly rewrite the question. So below, let's say x equals 3 over 2. And off to the right, let's say x equals negative 7 over 2. So the lazier thing to do would have just said in brackets x minus 3 over 2 close bracket open bracket x plus 7 over 2 close bracket equals 0 or y equals so they said no fractions so you could foil this thing out and then get rid of the fraction but we'd rather you do it the way we showed you get the thing equal to 0 put it in brackets then expand it rather than do the lazy thing like this and expand it with fractions. It will be way more difficult. Okay. Okay, we have 3D. So we have X equals negative 3. So if we add 3 to both sides, plus 3 plus 3, we'll get X plus 3 equals 0. Now, how is this going to be a quadratic equation if we don't have another x-intercept? Well, we just say, skip a line, x plus 3, brackets around it, squared, equals 0, or y equals. Let's actually just draw this graph. So let's draw a little graph. Let's put an x-intercept at negative 3. And let's just draw a parabola opening upwards. Who cares? Good. Let's mark our x-intercept at zero at negative three comma zero. So this is just a little idiosyncrasy. 
they might just give you one x-intercept, which means we just have one x-intercept, but we still have to make it a quadratic function, so we have to square it. All right. All right, we have 3e. So we have x-intercepts at x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. And we have a point negative 4, comma 6. So let's start by saying y equals a open bracket. And let's just put the x-intercepts in. So in your head, if you add 3 to both sides, we're going to get x plus 3 equals 0. And in your head, if we add 1 to both sides, we'll get x plus 1 equals 0. In the top right, we can carefully identify the point as x comma y, and then we can substitute. 6 equals a open bracket, negative 4 plus 3, close open, negative 4 plus 1. 6 equals a open bracket, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, and negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. 6 equals a open, negative 1 times negative 3 is 3, and let's clean it up this time. 6 equals... 3a. Let's divide both sides by 3, over 3, over 3, and a equals 2. Skip a line and let's rewrite it. y equals 2 open, x plus 3, close open, x plus 1. Great, so let's circle that answer. Now let's foil it out and let's skip a whole bunch of steps. y equals, so we're going to do the foil and the distribute at the same time. x times x is x squared, times 2 is 2x squared x times 1 is positive x, 3 times x is 3x, 1x plus 3x is 4x times 2 is 8x. 3 times 1 is 3, times 2 is positive 6, circle our answer. So in the last couple of questions, we've seen how to factor to find our x-intercepts, and we've seen how to get x-intercepts and give the quadratic equation or function that holds it true. Awesome. Okay, we have 4a. F solve slash find x-intercepts by using the square root method. y equals 0 if x-intercepts. So it's either y equals or equal to 0, both the same. So y equals x squared minus 9. So we're going to start by putting 0 in for y. So 0 equals x squared minus 9. And nobody likes the 0 on that side, so cross it off and say equals 0 on the right-hand side. Equals 0. We're going to add 9 to both sides, plus 9 minus, plus 9 plus 9. And x squared equals 9. And we can square root both sides. And we'll get x equals plus minus 3. So let's graph this one. So let's draw a little graph. And let's put x-intercepts at plus 3 and minus 3. And draw a parabola. Awesome. Okay, we have 4b. So here we have open bracket x minus 2, close bracket squared minus 1 equals 0. So notice it's already equal to 0. We don't have to put 0 in for y. So let's add 1 to both sides. So plus 1 plus 1. And x minus 2 all squared equals 1. Let's square root both sides. Square root the left hand side. Square root the right hand side. So the square root of x minus 2 squared is just x minus 2 equals plus minus 1. Now we're going to skip a line and put two equations side by side. x minus 2 equals 1, and beside it, x minus 2 equals negative 1. In both equations, we're going to add 2. On the left, add 2, and we'll get x equals 3, circle our answer. And if we add 2 again, x equals 1 one circle our answer. So we're not going to keep drawing the graph for you. Those are our solutions or x-intercepts if it was y equals. Awesome. Okay, for c, we have negative x squared equals negative 4x plus 3. So we could add x squared to both sides, but I want to show you a different step. Let's add 4x to both sides first, plus 4x, plus 4x, and we'll have negative x squared plus 4x equals 3, and then we can subtract 3 from both sides, minus 3, minus 3, and we'll get negative x squared 
plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. We can then divide both sides by negative 1. Over negative 1, over negative 1. Good. And we'll have x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Two numbers that multiply to get 3 and add to get negative 4 or negative 3 and negative 1. So we can factor it to be x minus 3, x minus 1 equals 0. We can set our factors equal to 0 separately. x minus 3 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. And we can add 3 to both sides, x equals 3. And we can add 1 to both sides, x equals 1. And we have our x-intercepts at 3 and 1, or solutions to the problem. Remember, solutions if it's equal to 0, or x-intercepts if it's y equals all the same. So remember, we could have added x squared to both sides. Let's redo that. So let's rewrite it. Negative x squared equals negative 4x plus 3 and simply add x squared to both sides plus x squared plus x squared 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 3 and let's put an arrow from that line to the line above that's identical to it a little bit up a little bit up a little bit up right about one more up there we go perfect so notice we could have just done that would have been a lot simpler. But keep in mind, get it equal to zero however you like. Make your x squared term positive by dividing both sides by negative one or doing algebra appropriately, and then factoring to find your x-intercepts. So, all right. Okay, so we are continuing with 4c. We just factored it to show you that that's the old way, and now we're going to do another way. So let's say negative x squared equals negative 4x plus 3. And let's add x squared to both sides plus x squared plus x squared. We'll have 0 equals x squared plus 4x, sorry, minus 4x plus 3. We can now complete the square. Brackets around the first two things. Off to the right, b over 2 all squared. And down the page, we can substitute negative 4 divided by 2 squared is negative 2 squared is 4. So we're going to add and subtract 4 inside the brackets. So Let's start a little bit to the left. 0 equals open bracket x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 4 close bracket plus 3. We can scribble out that bracket and move the negative outside. 0 equals, we can factor the brackets to be x minus 2, x minus 2, two numbers that multiply to get 4 and add to get negative 4. And then negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And then we can call it a squared term. So let's skip a line. 0 equals x minus 2, all squared, minus 1. Then we can solve using the square root method. Let's plus 1 to both sides, plus 1, plus 1. And we'll get 1 equals x minus 2, brackets around it squared let's square root both sides and we'll get plus minus one equals x minus two and then let's make two equations side by side so let's skip a line and say one equals x minus two and beside it negative one equals x minus two if we add two to both sides we'll get x equals three circle your answer and if we add two to both sides we'll get x equals one circle your answer notice we're going to be skipping steps more and more often now so notice we just found x intercepts by using the square root method we just wanted to quickly show you that you could have factored it to find exactly the same answers so you can use either method whichever method you like you can decide based on how far the question has come along or if the teacher specifically tells you to do a certain type Okay. Okay, we have 4D. So we have x squared plus 4 equals 0. Let's subtract 4 from both sides. Minus 4 minus 4. x squared equals negative 4. Let's square root both sides. And can we square it a negative? No. No solution. Done. If you ever square root both sides and you try and square it a negative, no solution. Okay, we have 4e. 
So two open bracket, x plus three close bracket squared equals five. Let's start by dividing both sides by two over two over two, and we're gonna get x plus three all squared equals five over two. Now we're gonna square root both sides, square root that, square root that, and we're gonna get x plus three equals plus minus root five over two. Then we're simply just gonna minus three from both sides, minus three, minus three, and we're gonna get x plus, x equals plus minus root five over two on the top of the fraction, minus three, good. So let's circle that answer. That is a fine answer. If your teacher asks you to type it into the calculator, then type it into the calculator and give them an answer with decimals. If they ask you to add fractions so it's in a single term, then add fractions so it's in a single term. But we're not going to go over all those different ways. If you want to learn a little bit more about working with radicals, go ahead and look at the equations of radicals in the next chapter. Okay. Okay, we have 4f, 3 open bracket, x plus 1, close bracket squared, minus 12 equals 0. So let's add 12 to both sides, plus 12, plus 12, 3 open, x plus 1, close, squared equals 12, and we'll divide both sides by 3, over 3, over 3. The 3's cancel, so we're left with x plus 1 squared equals four. Square root both sides, x plus one equals plus minus root two, sorry, plus minus two. Let's set two equations side by side, x plus one equals positive two, and x plus one equals negative two. Let's minus one from both sides, and x equals one, circle our answer, and x equals negative 3 minus 1 from both sides. Good. So sometimes we get root answers, sometimes we get nice integer answers. All right. Okay, so we have 3g. 4g, excuse me. Negative open bracket, x minus 2, close bracket squared, plus 8, equals 0. So let's minus 8 from both sides, minus 8, minus 8. And then we're going to get negative open, x minus 2, close bracket squared, equals negative 8. Let's divide both sides by negative 1 over negative 1 over negative 1, and x minus 2 all squared equals 8. Let's square root both sides, and we'll get x minus 2 equals plus minus root 8. Now, for these simple ones, they'll want you to simplify the square root. So, we're just going to erase those brackets on the left-hand side. So, let's take root 8 off to the right all by itself, root 8. And let's do a prime factorization tree right below the 8. So, 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. So, beside root 8, let's say equals 2 root 2. Again, if you have difficulty with roots, go back to grade 10 and learn about roots, or go to grade 11 and learn more about roots. So we can say back to the left, x minus 2 equals plus minus 2 root 2. Then we can add 2 to both sides. And we'll get x equals plus minus 2 root 2 plus 2. Circle our answer. So keep in mind, we could have written two equations side by side. Let's do that. x equals 2 root 2 plus 2. And beside it, x equals negative 2 root 2 plus 2. So again, in the last question, we didn't bother adding fractions or rationalizing the denominator. But here, if you can just simplify a root, your teacher's probably going to make you do that. Let's circle both our final answers as well. Awesome. Okay, we have 4h. So we have 3 open bracket x plus 1 half, close bracket squared, minus 9, equals 0. So we can add 9 to both sides, plus 9, plus 9, and we'll get 3 open, x plus 1 half, close squared, equals 9. 
We can then divide both sides by 3, and we'll get x plus 1, brackets around it squared, equals 3. We can then square root both sides, and we'll get x plus 1 half equals plus minus root 3. We can then just simply add 1 half to both sides, sorry, subtract 1 half from both sides. So minus 1 half, minus 1 half, and we'll get x equals plus minus root 3, all minus 1 half, circle our answer. So again, that's exact value. Your teacher might be asking you for the decimal, so we're just going to do that once. So first of all, let's set up two equations side by side. x equals root 3 minus a half, and beside it, x equals negative root 3 minus a half. And then let's find out, let's circle both those answers and let's find out what the decimals are. So one on the left, square root 3 minus a half is 1.23. And the one on the right, negative root 3 minus a half is negative 2.23. Circle both of our answers. So those are in decimals to the 100th spot. They may ask for exact values or decimals. Okay. Okay, solve 5a. Solve by using the quadratic equation. So x squared minus 2x equals 3. So we have to get this thing equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And we're going to say x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Let's put a 1 in front of x squared. And below, let's say a equals 1, b equals negative 2, and c equals negative 3. Let's carefully skip a line and write quadratic equation. Negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, we're very carefully going to substitute. So we have negative, open bracket, negative 2 for b, plus minus, square root, open bracket, negative 2, close bracket, squared, minus 4, open bracket, 1, close bracket, open bracket, negative 3, all over, 2 open bracket, 1, close bracket. So we're going to say negative times a negative is positive, 2 plus, minus, square root, and we're going to type the whole thing into the graphing calculator. So open bracket, negative 2, close squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 3, exactly like you see it, and we get 16, positive 16, all over 2. Now the square root of 16 is 4, so we can say 2 plus minus 4 all over 2. Then we can make two equations side by side. So 2 plus 4 to the right's good. 2 plus 4 all over 2, which is 6 over 2, which equals 3. <clears throat> and then we have 2 minus 4 all over 2, which is negative 1. So let's sum, a, sum up the answers. x equals 3, circle your answer, and x equals negative 1. So keep in mind, we could have factored that thing. We could have used the square root method. I just wanted to use the new quadratic formula with nice, clean, easy answers. They are no longer going to be those easy answers. Okay, so we've got 5b. So we've got 2x squared equals negative 7x plus 3. Now we've shown you enough adding and subtracting to both sides. We're going to start bringing stuff over. 2x squared, if we bring it over, plus 7x. If we bring it over, minus 3 equals 0. Let's identify a, b, and c. a equals 2. b equals 7. c equals negative 3. And let's write down quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so let's very carefully substitute. Negative 7 plus minus square root. S brackets around it. 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. So then we're going to just type it straight into the calculator and over 2 times 2. So we'll have negative 7 plus minus, 
the square root of, so 7 squared is 49, minus 4 times 2 times negative 3, and we get root 73 all over 4. So we can say x equals that, and we can circle our answer. Now we'll create two equations side by side. So x equals the positive, negative 7, plus root 73, all over 4, and x equals negative 7 minus root 73 all over 4. Now let's type it in to figure out what the graphing calculator says is our answer. So let's first of all circle both of our answers. And in red pen, let's put brackets around the tops of the fractions to remind us that that's how we're going to type it into the calculator. So if I say open bracket negative 7 plus root 73, close bracket, close bracket, divided by 4, we're going to get our first answer, which is 0. Point, excuse me, negative 0. 0.84. And then the one on the right is going to be negative 7 minus, oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, I've typed it in incorrectly. I accidentally got it wrong. Let's erase that one. So that one will be 0 0.386. The one on the right, negative 7 minus root 73 divided by 4 is negative 3.87. Excuse me, I accidentally forgot to use brackets or something happened, but that was a partial error. Sorry about that. So we have exact values and answers as decimals. Let's circle those answers. All right. Okay, we have 5c. x squared plus 3x plus 7 equals 0. So Let's put a 1 in front of x squared, and let's write down quad form. Minus b plus minus root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's extend that over the fraction to be underneath the whole thing. Both directions, good. So we want to make sure that that thing is under both. Good, so we can substitute. So we have minus 3 plus minus 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7. Good. All over. 2 times 1. So we have negative 3 plus minus. And then we're going to type exactly what we see underneath the square root. So 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7. And we get negative 3. All over 2. Can we square root a negative? No. One single line through it and no solution. So remember, if the method that you are trying to find does not work, it just means we have no solution. We're always looking for x-intercepts. This thing just doesn't have any x-intercepts. All right. Um, great. Okay, we have 5d. So we have 4x squared minus 12x minus 14 equals 0. So let's start by dividing both sides by 2. Over 2, over 2, over 2. Great. So we have 2x squared minus 6x minus 7 equals 0. And now we can go into quad form. So let's skip writing down quad form and just go right into it. So we're going to have negative negative 6 plus minus square root 6 negative 6 brackets around it squared, minus 4 times 2 times negative 7. And we're going to type in underneath the square root. So we can say positive 6 plus minus square root all over 4. Now if we type in underneath, we're going to get negative 6 squared is 36, minus 4 times 2 times negative 7. We're going to get We're going to get 
one second, sorry, 36 minus 4 times 2 times negative 7. 36 minus 4 times 2 times negative 7. We're going to get 92, excuse me. So we're going to take 92 off to the right and do a prime factorization tree. And it's going to be 4 times 23. And it'll be 2 times 2. And 23 is prime. So we can say 6 plus minus. Back to the left, 6 plus minus. 2 root 23 all over 4 and we can divide the top and bottom by 2. If we divide the 6 by 2, we get 3. Good, we're going to get 3 plus minus root 20. Oh, uh, let's erase that. So we're dividing the top and bottom by 2. So if we divide 2 by 2, we get 1. So it's simply going to be root 23 all over 2. And then let's write our answer twice. So x equals 3 plus root 23 all over 2 and 3 minus root 23 all over 2 and circle both of our answers and let's also give the decimal answer x equals 3.90 and x equals negative 0 0.90 circle both of our answers all right, so sometimes you have to simplify a radical square root and then also maybe have to do something like divide the top and bottom by a certain number. Okay. Okay, we have 6a, find the quadratic function in y equals. So let's first start by saying x equals plus minus root five. And let's square both sides. So brackets around the left-hand side squared and brackets are on the right-hand side squared. So x squared equals five, just five, not plus minus, just five. The plus minus gets rid. So now we can minus five from both sides. So minus five, minus five, and we'll get x squared minus five equals zero. Let's circle that answer. And let's also say y equals x squared minus five. So they might ask you for a quadratic equation above, or they might ask you for a quadratic function below. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, we have 6b. So we have x equals 2 plus minus square root 3. We'll start by minusing 2 from both sides, minus 2 minus 2, and x minus 2 equals plus minus root 3. Brackets around the left-hand side, squared. Brackets around the right-hand side, squared. We have x minus 2, brackets around it, squared, equals 3. And we'll minus 3 from both sides. Minus 3 minus 3. x minus 2, brackets around it, squared. Minus 3 equals 0. And we have our quadratic equation. Let's now circle that answer. And let's also say y equals x minus 2 brackets around it squared minus three getting very comfortable we're always looking for x intercepts if y is zero we put zero in for y if the thing equals zero we can just say y equals and that is the function that we get okay okay we have six c x equals three plus minus root two all over two just good Perfect. So we need to clean this thing up by timesing both sides by 2. So on the right-hand side, times 2. On the left-hand side, 2 times. So we'll have 2x equals 3 plus minus root 2. We'll minus 3 from both sides. Minus 3 minus 3. We'll have 2x minus 3 equals plus minus root 2. Then we'll square both sides. Brackets around the left-hand side squared. Brackets around the right-hand side squared. And we'll get 2x minus 3 all squared equals 2. Then we'll minus 2 from both sides and we'll get 2x minus 3 all squared equal, minus 2 equals 0 and then circle our answer and then also say y equals that function. So y equals 2x minus 3 close bracket squared minus 2. Great. Okay 7a y equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. 
So it just says find the number of roots or x-intercepts or solutions or zeros, all the same thing. In order to do that, we're going to take the thing from underneath the square root in quadratic formula called the discriminant. Let's say b squared minus 4ac and write discriminant beside it. Discriminant. Uh, the whole thing, discriminant, discriminant. So this thing is a very important tool to help us find out how many x-intercepts we have. So if we take this, we're going to substitute, let's skip a line, and say open bracket, negative 4, our b value, squared minus 4 times 1 times 3. So negative 4 squared is going to be 16. And negative 4 times 1 times 3 is negative 12. And 16 minus, 4, 16 minus 12 is 4. Let's put a gigantic positive sign and circle it. Uh, not there. So somewhere else nearby, all good. Let's put a gigantic positive sign and circle it. So the discriminant was positive. We're going to get two x-intercepts. So if you open up the graph and calculator and we sketch that graph, you'll notice that we have two x-intercepts. We don't care what they are. We could obviously find them if we wanted to, but we have two x-intercepts. So if the discriminant is positive, if we're going into quadratic formula and we're adding and subtracting a positive number, we get two answers. So basically, if the discriminant is positive, we get two solutions. Let's write down two solutions near the positive sign. Two solutions or two x-intercepts, or two zeros, or two roots. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so we have 7b. y equals x squared plus 5x plus 7, finding the number of x roots, x-intercepts, solutions, or zeros. So let's write down quad form, or the discriminant, so b squared minus 4ac. And let's substitute. So we have open bracket, 5 close bracket squared, minus 4 open, 1 close open, 7 close. So that's going to be 27 minus 28, sorry, 25 minus 28, which is equal to negative 3. Circle our answer, put a gigantic minus sign beside it and circle it, and let's sketch the graph. So let's go into our y equals on our graph and calculator and sketch this graph. Notice it doesn't have any x-intercepts. So beside the negative sign, we're just cleaning it up, cleaning up that 25 there. So beside the negative, we're just going to say no solution, meaning no x-intercepts, no zeros, no roots, no solutions. Great. So if the thing underneath the square root indiscriminate is negative. We can't square it a negative. And if we were looking for x-intercepts and the thing that we were using to try and find the x-intercepts did not work, it means that there is none of what we were looking for. No solution if the discriminant is negative. All right. Yeah. Okay, 7c. So we have y equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. If we write down to discriminant, we can say b squared minus 4ac, and we can substitute. So we have open bracket, 6 close bracket squared, minus 4 times 1 times 9. Now we get 36 minus 36 equals 0. So let's circle 0, and let's spell out z-e-r-o. It's equal to 0. So we have one x-intercept, one solution. Let's write down one solution. If it's equal to zero, we have one solution. If the discriminant, the thing underneath the square root in quadratic formula is zero, if we add and subtract zero, we get the same answer. So let's put this in our graph and calculator and sketch a graph. So notice we have an x-intercept at negative three and draw a parabola opening upwards. Notice we only have one solution if the discriminant is zero.
Okay, we have 10B. Find the dimensions of a rectangular garden. So let's draw a rectangular garden with an area A equals 56 and a perimeter P equals 30. So let's start off with both of our equations. So we know that perimeter is equal to, let's draw our diagram. So we have W and L. So perimeter is going to be 2W plus 2L. And the formula for the area, A equals length times width. Okay, so they've given us a perimeter of 30, so we can substitute 30 in for P. So we can say 30 equals 2W plus 2L. Then they've given us our area, so we can put that in. 56 equals L times W. So now we're going to isolate for a variable in the equation on the left. Let's start by dividing both sides by 2. Over 2, over 2, over 2. So we'll get 15 equals W plus L. We can then subtract W or L from both sides. Let's minus W from both sides. And we'll get 15 minus W equals L. Let's mirror it. L equals 15 minus W. Brackets around what L is equal to. Brackets around L in the other equation. Skip a few lines. 56 equals 15 minus W times w. We can distribute our w backwards, so we'll get 56 equals 15w minus w squared. We want to get a squared term positive, so let's start by adding w squared to both sides. And we'll get w squared plus 56 equals 15w We'll then subtract 15w from both sides. And we'll get w squared minus 15w plus 56 equals 0. Two numbers that multiply together to get 56 and add together to get negative 15 are negative 8 and negative 7. So we can say w minus 8, w minus 7. And then if we set our factors equal to 0 separately and solve, we'll get w equals 8. And we'll get w equals 7. Circle both of our answers. So let's start off with w equals 7. So if w equals 7, l equals 15 minus 7, l will equal 8. So if w equals 7, l equals 8. And then if we take our equation again and do L equals 15 minus W being 8, we'll get L equals 7. So if W equals 8, L equals 7. And if W equals 7, L equals 8. Just notice the symmetry of it all. So let's redraw our shape down below and label the diagram. So we have a width of 8 or 7 and a length of 8 or 7. Our area, A equals LW, length times width, 8 times 7 is 56, check mark. And our perimeter, P equals 2L plus 2W, that will be 16 plus 14 equals 30, check mark. Awesome. So remembering, always check your answer. Very interesting question. When we have two equations, we have to isolate for a variable, then substitute that variable into the other equation. So again, two equations side by side. Isolate for a variable. Substitute that into the other equation. Solve and then resubstitute those two values back into the other equation, get both your answers, and make sure that you check your answer. Okay. Okay, we have 10C. So find the dimensions of a rectangular fence split in half against a wall. 
So this time we're going to draw a horizontal squiggly line representing that wall and we're going to draw a three-sided rectangular shape and we're going to vertically split it in half perpendicular to the wall. So we have a perimeter P equals 39 of fencing and we have an area A equals 66. So let's label our diagram. So let's label width and length. Good. So our perimeter P equals will be 3W plus L. Beside it, our area will still be length times width. So they've given us a perimeter of 39. We can put 39 in for P. So 39 equals 3W plus L. And then we can isolate for L in that equation. So if we subtract 3W, 39 minus 3W equals L. Let's put brackets around what L is equal to. Let's put brackets around L in the other equation. Let's start by putting 39. We can put, we can put 66 in for A. So we have an area of 66. So 66 equals open bracket 39 minus 3W close times W. Okay, so 66 equals 39W minus 3W squared. Now we're just going to start bringing stuff over without actually adding and subtracting it to both sides. So we're going to bring the 3W squared over and it'll be 3W squared minus 39W plus 66 equals 0. So we could try and factor it, but let's divide both sides by 3. Over 3, over 3, over 3, over 3. Good, so we'll have w squared minus 13w plus 22 equals 0. And two numbers that multiply to get 22 and add to get 13 are going to be 11 and 2. So both negative, both negative. We're going to have w minus 13 excuse me, W minus 11 and W minus 2 equals 0. That means that W equals 11 and W equals 2. So let's circle both those answers and then let's take those answers and substitute them into the equation off to the left. So L equals 39 minus 3 times 11, which equals 6, L equals 6, sure, 6, L equals 6. Good. And then let's put L equals 6 below W equals 11. So below off to the right, below W equals 11. Let's say L equals 6. Circle your answer. Now let's use W equals 2. So back to the left, L equals... 39 minus 3 times 2, and that's 39 minus 6, which is equal to 33. Circle your answer and put that below W equals 2, L equals 33. So either of these cases work. So let's draw this diagram, smaller than usual, but twice side by side. So squiggly line for the wall, and then a three-sided shape, and then with the cut in half, and again, that exactly the same diagram off to the right. And starting off with W equals 11, let's put 11 three times, 11, 11, 11. And let's put a six on the length for that one. And then the other diagram, let's say two, two and two and 33. And then let's confirm. We're gonna do this in our heads. So what's the perimeter of the first shape of all the fencing? 11 plus 11 plus 11 is 33, plus 6 is 39. And off to the right, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, plus 33 is also 39. And length times width, 11 times 6 is 66, and 2 times 33 is also 66 for the area. So let's say check mark, check mark. Awesome. Okay, we have 10D. So find the dimensions of a rectangular poster, which has dimensions of five by seven, and then the frame of the, the width, the frame width of the frame is equal around the poster and increases the total area by 28 centimeters squared. So let's first draw a little rectangle and call it on the inside five by seven. 
Good. Then we're increasing it. Let's uh, exaggerate the increase so a larger rectangle around it. Good. Now it says we're increasing the frame width, which is equal around all the dimensions. So how wide is the width? Well, we're going to call it X. So just in the diagram, just the width, not there. So just the increase of width. Good. That's X. And one more time. Good. That's X. Now it says it increases the total area by 28. So first of all, what's the area of the inside? Off to the right, let's say A equals LW. And that's going to be A equals 5 times 7, which is equal to 35. Now it's saying we're increasing the total area by 28. So let's say 35 plus 28 equals 63. So that's going to be the total area. Okay. So now back to the left on the margin, let's say A equals LW. So this is going to be the bigger shape. So what are the dimensions of the bigger shape? Well, first of all, we know the area is 63, so we can put 63 on the left-hand side. Now the dimensions, the length. Well, it's not 7, it's 7 plus 2x. And 5 plus 2x, because we're increasing the dimensions on both sides. Okay, so 63 equals, let's FOIL this thing out. So 63 equals 35, let's do all the steps, plus 14x, plus 10x, plus 4x squared. So let's start by saying 0 equals 4x squared, putting our x squared term first. 14x plus 10x is positive 24x. And 35 minus 63 is negative 28. We can divide it both sides by 4. Over 4, over 4, over 4, both sides, good. 0 equals x squared plus 6x minus 7. This will factor to be x plus 7, x minus 1. Therefore, x equals negative 7, and beside it, x equals 1. Cross off x equals negative 7. We can't have a negative 7 length increase, and circle x equals 1. So let's redraw our diagram down below. Same diagram. Now, if the lengths are 5 by 7, let's put 5 by 7 on the inside. Then they're both increased by a length of 1. What will the new dimensions be? Well, it'll be 7 by 9. So we're increasing them by 2, by x twice. So 5 plus x plus x, or 5 plus 1 plus 1 will be 7. And 7 plus 1 plus 1 will be 9. Off to the right, a equals lw. And a equals 7 times 9 equals 63 check mark x equals 1 1 is the dimension of the width around the picture frame in order to increase it by that amount okay okay number 11 find the dimensions of a right angle triangle let's start by drawing a right angle triangle with one leg one centimeter longer than the other. So let's label one leg x and the other one x plus one. And the hypotenuse two centimeters longer than the smaller leg, so x plus two. So we have a right angle triangle. Let's start off with Pythagoras' theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now we can very carefully substitute in. So we can say x squared plus open bracket x plus 1 squared equals x plus 2 all squared. So we can FOIL it out. We're going to do this in our heads. So we get x squared plus x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. We can start off by subtracting x squared from both sides and simply cross off an x squared from both sides. We can say x squared on the far left, we can say x squared. 
and then hang tight. If we subtract 4x from both sides, it'll be minus 2x. That, that's good without it. Yeah, just minus 2x. Good, and then 1 minus 4 is just going to be negative 3 equals 0. We can factor it. Two numbers that multiply together to make negative 3 and add to get negative 2 are going to be x minus 3 and x plus 2 plus uh, 1, excuse me. Good, equals 0. And then our answers are going to be x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. And we can't have a negative length, so we can reject x equals negative 1 and circle x equals 3. We can then redraw the diagram and label the diagram on the left, 3, on the bottom, 4, and on the right, 5. And we can rewrite Pythag off to the right. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared and 25 equals 25 check mark. All right. Okay, 12a. So the height versus distance of a bow and arrow shot off a cliff on an angle is represented by the following equation. H equals negative 2d squared plus 8d plus 10. So off to the right, we're going to sketch a little Gra like sketch a little picture. So draw a little cliff and shoot a bow and arrow up on an angle off of that cliff. Perfect. Great. So we need to find out where this thing lands. So let's draw a graph behind this. So we can extend our y-axis as the cliff and then our horizontal axis there. And then let's extend the parabola in both directions and scribble it all off. Good. So there is our parabola. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and find x-intercepts by factoring it. So let's first of all put 0 in for h. So 0 equals that negative 2d squared plus 8d plus 10. And let's divide both sides by negative 2 over negative 2 over negative 2. Very carefully, 0 equals d squared minus 4d minus 5. Two numbers that multiply together to make negative 5 and add to get negative 4 are d minus 5 and d plus 1. And we can say d equals 5 and we can say d equals negative 1. Now let's put, let's mark our x-intercepts on the graph and label them. So we're going to have, careful, careful, we can't write over there. So on the left hand side, we can say, oh sure, okay, so negative 1, 0. Now that one's not part of it. Let's put a single line through it and a single line through our answer, d equals negative 1. Now let's label the other one off to the right, 5 comma 0. That's how far it goes. So the question says, how far did the arrow go before hitting the ground? Let's answer the question in English. 5 meters before hitting ground. Okay, so now it's asking at what distance is the height 16? So in the graph above where the height of the cliff is, let's put in a horizontal line and put two dots where the height is 16. On the y-axis, can we mark 16? Good. So we're going to take 16 and we're wondering when the height is 16. So we're going to put 16 in for h into the given equation from the beginning. So we can say 16 equals negative 2d squared plus 8d plus 10. Let's also put a nice rounded arrow from the equation way at the top coming down to where we were just to show where the equation came from. Good, so let's minus 16 from both sides. 0 equals negative 2d squared plus 8d and then 10 minus 16 will be negative 6 and then let's divide both sides by negative 2. Good, 0 equals d squared minus 4d plus 3. This factors to be d minus 3, d minus 1. Therefore, d equals 3 equals 0. Therefore, d equals 3 
and D equals 1. Good, let's circle both those answers. Let's actually circle D equals 5 above where we forgot to circle D equals 5. Always circling your answers. Good, let's label the graph. So we have the point 1, 16 and 3, 16. Good, down below let's answer the question in English. At a distance of 1 meter... and three meters the arrow has a height of 16 meters Awesome. So always answering your question in English if possible. It's going to make it so much easier when you go back and study your stuff to see a nice, clean English answer to way better understand it and completely minimize your amount of redoing questions and just studying the questions you've already done. All right. Okay, we have 12B. So, the height versus time of a rocket shot straight up off a removable mount with a velocity of 50 meters per second is represented by the following equation. H equals negative 4.9 T squared plus 50 T plus 1. Good, we're just cleaning up that 50 there. Good, so we're gonna put this right into the graphing calculator. So let's just draw an L graph and put a y-intercept of about one and draw a parabola going up and down. Keep in mind, the parabola, it's being shot straight up in the air and coming straight down, but it has to be graphed like this in a two-dimensional graph. So, how far did the rocket go before it hit the ground? Let's put a dot over there. And that is what we call an x-intercept. So first of all, let's have the parabola go in both directions a little bit farther and scribble off the negative part. So a little bit farther and scribble it off. And in the other direction and a little bit negative. Exactly. So we don't need to find the x-intercept on the left. So let's find the one on the right. So we're going to press the buttons. Second, 2ND. Calc, C-A-L-C. And zero, Z E R O. So it's asking us to go right, left bound. So let's go left bound and press enter. Then it's going to ask us to go right bound, below, press enter, press enter one more time, and it gives us our zero at 10.22, open bracket, 10.22, comma zero. So let's answer the question in English. So let's say rocket went 10.22 seconds in the air. Good, period. So now it's saying at what time is the height 100? So let's put a, let's mark 100 on the Y axis and put a horizontal line and let's find those two intersections. So in order to do this, let's write down the buttons down below. It's gonna be second, calc, intersect or int. And then we just need to go near the intersection. Let's do the one on the left first and say enter, enter, enter. And it gives us the intersection of open bracket, 2.69 comma 100. And then the other intersection, again, the same buttons. Just make sure that you move the cursor closer to the intersection. Enter, enter, enter. And we can say 7.52 comma 100. So remember, the thing, the rocket goes straight up in the air and then comes back down. It's in the air for 10.22 seconds and it's at 100 feet the first time on the way up at 2.68 seconds, and then 
a few seconds later at a total of 7.52 seconds, it comes back down through at the same height of 100. Okay, so just remember, lots of the questions that we can't do algebra for, we have to use the graphing calculator, or we could have done quadratic formula, for example. Okay. Okay. Okay, a pool area. So let's draw a pool. And maybe write, so now the area of this pool is 48 meters squared. Okay, this pool is surrounded by a deck of equal width of lengths x. Both locations. So the pool and the deck have a combined length and width of 10, 10 meters at the bottom, and 8 meters off to the right. So we want the dimensions of the pool. So we know that the dimensions of the pool are going to be 10 minus 2x at the bottom. And then we're not going to have enough space. So let's put an arrow from the right and call that 8 minus 2x because we're taking off x from both sides. So we can set it up. Let's say a equals lw. Now we have an area of 48. We can substitute on the left-hand side, 48 equals open bracket, 10 minus 2x, close open, 8 minus 2x. So we can say 48 equals, and let's foil this thing out very fast. So 10 times 8 is 80, and hang tight. It'll be minus 20x minus 16x, so it'll be minus 36x plus 4x squared. Let's get it equal to 0 and rearrange the order of the terms at the same time. 0 equals... 4x squared minus 36x and 80 minus 48 is 32. Good, so we can start by dividing both sides by 4. So 0 equals x squared minus 9x plus 8. Without skipping any more lines, factor it, x minus 8, x minus 1. Therefore, x equals 8. And beside it, x equals 1. Let's circle both of our answers. Now, can you cut off an 8 twice from 10 or 8? No. Let's reject x equals 8 and x therefore equals 1. So if we're to take 1 off of 8 twice, we get 6. If we take 1 off of 10 twice, we get 8. And 6 times 8 is 48. Check mark. Awesome. Okay, 13b. So we have a picture. So let's draw a little picture. And it's surrounded by a border. And the total dimensions are 8 by 6, with the width of the border being equal, being x the whole time. Now, again, remember, sometimes in the word problem, they're going to explain to you the diagram. Sometimes they're going to give you the diagram. Sometimes not. So in the previous questions, we didn't give you the diagram, and now we're giving you the diagram. Okay, so a picture is 75% of the total area. So off to the right, a equals 6 times 8 equals 48. So that's the total area. Now the picture in the center, let's put an arrow to the picture in the center and say that. Yeah, exactly. So that's going to be, sure, picture. Pick, good. So now we have to find 75% of 48. So let's say 48 times 0 0.75 equals 36. <clears throat> so now back to the left on the margin, we can say A equals LW. And we can substitute 36 equals, so the length of the picture is 8 minus 2x and 6 minus 2x brackets, 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 brackets. Good, so we can foil it out. 36 equals 48. Hang tight. We're going to have minus 16 minus, sure, minus 16x minus 12x plus 4x. So we'll get it equal to 0 and rearrange the order of the term. 0 equals 
4x squared minus 28x and 48 minus 36 is going to be 12. We can divide both sides by 4 over 4 over 4 and we can get 0 equals x squared minus 7x plus 3. Whoa, that's a quadratic formula. Okay, so let's do quad form on that question. So let's just do it. So you know what? Yeah, we're going to do it above to the right. So we're not going to write down quad form. We're just going to start substituting into it and we're going to skip steps. So negative negative b is going to be that, sure, plus minus square root negative 40 it's negative 7 all squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 all over 2 times 1. We can clean that up a bunch and say 7 plus minus we're going to type underneath the calculator which is going to be 49 minus 12 so that's going to be root 37 all over 2. Let's circle that answer and then we're going to write the decimals x equals so on my calculator, 7 plus root 37 enter divided by 2 is 6.54. And x also equals, if I do the minus, 7 minus root 37 all divided by 2, we get 0 0.45. Let's circle both of our answers. So if we cut, if, if, if this is the value of x, that will allow us to have that happen. So now we just want to check our answer. Okay, so because one of the lengths is 8, we can't have 6.54 twice on both sides. Let's reject 6.54 and let's summarize our answer red is fine down below x equals 0 0.45 so x equals 0 0.45 is meters so let's get meters on there or 45 centimeters so this is a gigantic picture on the wall that is takes up the whole wall eight meters by six meters, some sort of a map or something. And we have borders that are 45 centimeters or 0 0.45 meters. So remember, a lot of these questions look similar. And we've run through a few different examples of them because they're all tiny little idiosyncrasies of the last. Be sure that you're able to do all the different types. Okay. All right. So we have 13C. So we have a scalene triangle with a base of X plus 2 and a height of x, and off to the right, an area a equals 40 meters squared. So back to the left on the margin, our formula for area of a triangle is a equals base times height, bh over 2, and we can substitute. On the left-hand side, we can say 40 equals x plus 2 times x, good all over 2. So we can start by timesing both sides by 2. So times 2 and 2 times. So we can cross off the 2s on the right. Good. 80 equals and we can distribute backwards x squared plus 2x. We can get it equal to 0. 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 80. And we can factor it. Two numbers that multiply together to make negative 80 and add to get 2 are 10 and 8. x plus 10 and x minus 8. Therefore, x equals negative 10 and x equals positive 8. And if we put negative 10 back into the diagram, we can't have a negative length. So we'll reject negative 10 and circle x equals 8. And we'll check our answer. Let's redraw the diagram. Smaller. And we have a base of 10 and a height of 8. And if we read out the formula for the area, A equals BH over 2, <laughs> base times height divided by 2, then A equals 8 times 10 divided by 2 equals 40, check mark. 
So we found the X that will allow us to have a triangular area of 40. All right. Okay, we have number 14. So double the area by extending the dimensions by the same amount. So let's start by drawing a rectangle and on the left saying 40 and on the top saying 60 and we're going to extend this by the same amount. So we're going to extend it to make a larger rectangle and we're going to extend it by lengths of x. Now it says we're going to double the area. So first of all, 40 times 60 inside the smaller rectangle, let's say 2400. 2400. And then if we double that area off to the right, 2400 times 2 equals 4800. Good, so 4800 we're going to use now. So back down to the left, we're going to say A equals LW. And we're going to put 4800 on the left hand side. 4800 equals 40 plus X times 60 plus X, brackets, 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 brackets. Okay, let's clean it up. 4800 equals, foil it out, 2400 plus 100X plus X squared, zero equals X squared plus 100X minus 2400. That'll factor to be X minus, excuse me. Whoa, I don't know what that factors to be, hang tight. Okay, so excuse us, we had to work on that for a second, but it factors to be X minus 20 and X plus 120. We can then say x equals 20 and x equals negative 120. We can't increase it by a negative amount. We can reject it and x equals 20. Let's redraw a diagram of a large rectangle. And if we increase 40 by 20, we get 60. And if we increase 60 by 20, we get 80. And let's say 60 times 80 equals 4,800. Check mark. All right. Okay, we have number 15. Find the volume if. So we have a cylinder. So let's draw our cylinder. And we have a height of 10 centimeters. Just 10 is good. Centimeters is even better. Good. Now it's saying find the volume. We have a surface area. So off to the right, let's say SA equals 400 pi. So directly below it, let's write the formula for the surface area. SA equals. So the formula for the surface area of a cylinder is going to be two circles. So 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. If you have difficulty with that formula, go back to grade 8 and learn it. Okay, so we're given 400 pi. Let's skip a line and let's say 400 pi on the left-hand side. 400 pi equals... 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r times 10. Nice. Okay, so let's clean it up. So 400 pi equals 2 pi r squared plus 20 pi r. We can divide both sides by 2 over, we can divide both sides by pi first of all. Let's just cross off all the pi's. And then we can divide both sides by two, both sides. Good, so 200 equals r squared plus 10r. We can then get it equal to zero, so zero equals r squared plus 10r minus 200. This will factor to be r minus 20, r plus 20 and r minus 10 which means that r is equal to negative 20 and r is equal to positive 10. We can circle both answers and reject the negative length. We can't have a negative length. So we have a radius of 10. Now below the diagram, let's say v equals pi r squared h, our formula for the volume of a cylinder. And we can simply take the 10 and substitute it for r. v equals pi open, 10 close, 
squared times the height of 10, which means we have V equals 1,000. 10 squared is 100 times 10 is 1,000 pi centimeters cubed. Circle our answer. Or the answer V equals 314.59 centimeters cubed. Circle your answer. Awesome. That was a hard one.